So we just convinced ourselves that our speed was constant one. So that was our the point of doing this was reparameterize so that we move at a constant speed. So we checked at the very end that we were indeed moving with the speed of one. Now we're going to do another example. No, we'll do a definition. So we'll do speed. Oh, I need it. Oh, that one's dark enough. So speed, we'll write it as ds over dt. I think the multicolored pen actually makes my computer run a little slower. Does it really? Yeah, I can do it. Like so literally the color? It's like an eighth of a second delay, I can feel. Uh, it's worth it for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Well. All right, so this is the speed, this definition. But you knew that before it's the, <coughs> before it's the absolute value, what do we call this now? Magnitude. 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 So it's really the exact same as it was before, it's just magnitude. That's speed, and these are our definitions. And the unit tangent vector. We're going to use the letter T for this, capital T. What do you think the unit tangent? So, first of all, what does the tangent vector refer to? It would be the derivative of our position. So it's basically the velocity. So V of T is the velocity. And we want <coughs> this to be a unit. So how do we? That's exactly right. We got to normalize it. So we're going to divide by its magnitude. And here is very explicitly where you better not never have that 0, that magnitude 0, or else this is going to uh, be infinity or undefined, really. So this is the point where we really need the uh, curve to never be still. So the, the phraseology when you say tangent vector refers to... Um, tangent vector is the derivative, yeah. Okay. And, uh, or the velocity. The velocity is the tangent vector. Uh, sometimes when we say tangent vector, we don't really care necessarily how uh, the magnitude of it. We're thinking of it as a direction. Uh, so when we just say tangent vector, we may not be thinking about the actual rate of speed the object has, meaning we don't care how long that vector is. Whereas the velocity is talking explicitly about not just the direction it's going, but the, the actual speed is going in that direction. So sometimes when people say tangent vector, they're just talking about direction, not necessarily an actual magnitude in that direction. But do, when, whenever you write, you're going to be explicit about how the difference between when we're referring to one or the other? Yeah, I'll try not to use the word uh, tangent vector too much, but if I do say tangent vector, I mean the velocity. Uh, but this is specifically the unit tangent vector. It's a function of t, so I should write it as t of t. So I want to know on this example, I want the unit tangent vector and the length traveled. So we'll be given the curve and we'll keep it in two dimensions. It's a little easier computationally. So the x coordinate will be 2 plus t. The y, oh, this will be three dimensions. Never mind. So y coordinate is minus t plus 1 and the z coordinate is t. So I want to know the unit tangent vector. and the arc length. <coughs> so I just wrote the unit tangent vector above right there. So that should be pretty easy to compute. Uh, just remember V of T is the R prime. How do we get arc length? Pretty sure I wrote this down before. So definitely take the integral. So we from A to B. What are the beginning and ending values? T0, 
So there'll be two t values. I better write down t is going to be in the interval 0 to 3. So I need to write that down. So we're going to go from 0 to 3. What is our actual arc length integral? Yes, we need a dummy variable. Actually, we don't need a dummy variable here because we are uh, going to be plugging in numerical endpoints. So if you have a definite integral, meaning you know a and b, you don't have to uh, use tau. So you only need to use tau if you're going to be um, integrating and using a t as one or <coughs> the other endpoint. All right, so you need to find r prime of t, and which of course is v of t, and then figure out the unit tangent vector and this integral right here. So I'll give you a minute head start, and then I will get, uh, do this problem. So it's a good time if you have any questions, ask them. This example computationally was super easy, mainly because our uh, arc length, or not arc length, the magnitude of the velocity was constant. So there wasn't very much actual calculus to do. Any calculus on these, or any calculus, any questions on these calculus steps? <laughs> um, any calculus on these questions? <laughs> So that was given to us right here. Oh. <coughs> <laughs> I did. I wrote that down after I wrote the rest of the problem down. Oh. Yeah. So hopefully some homework problems are less trivial. Generally, it won't be a constant. The uh, magnitude of your velocity or the magnitude of your velocity shouldn't generally be a constant. It will sometimes, especially if you're going around like a, um, uh, a loop, if it's circular, you may have a constant acceleration. Uh, <coughs> not acceleration, a constant magnitude of your velocity. 
even though your velocity may not be constant, the magnitude very well could be. Uh, how did we know, just looking at the problem itself, how do we know that the velocity was going to be constant? What indicates, just looking at the curve at the bottom of the screen, what would indicate that this velocity is going to be constant without doing any calculus? That's right. If you have linear equations, so each component's linear, your derivatives are all going to be constants. So usually you won't get linear in all three variables, so generally your velocity won't always be constant. So if your velocity is constant, it had to come from linear functions. Yep. So yeah, one of these not being linear will make the velocity not constant. So that's the end of 13.3. I'm going to go to 13.4 now. So this is curvature. And to make sure we don't forget, this is not a midterm 2, meaning midterm 2 covers everything up to 13.3. So we'll start with start with the definition here. Uh, so curvature <coughs> so in English curvature means basically it's the radius of the uh, turn that you're making at the moment. I shouldn't make the second person. So we'll say the race of uh, the turn that a particle is making. All right, so the easiest case, a particle is moving in a circle over and over again. So let's say you have a particle moving in a circle what will be the curvature? The radius of the circle. So we're going to use the letter K for curvature because curvature starts with a K. It's actually kappa, but it looks just like a K. So this kappa is curvature. So if you are traveling in a circle, your curvature is constant because you're always going around a circle with the same radius. However, when you're driving home today in the snow, you probably will not be going constantly in a circle. Maybe for a brief period of time, you may be going in a circle, but hopefully not more than one or two uh, rotations. <laughs> <laughs> so in general, uh, you won't be going around a circle forever. So your curvature generally will not always be the same. So let's think about <coughs> the other easy case, which is a straight line. Doesn't have to be horizontal, could be any direction. Well, we're rotating, but then we're also rotating. Yeah, which is also rotating in the galaxy, which is also rotating. It's all relative, it's all relative man. <laughs> all right, what if, if you're going in a straight line, if straight lines exist <laughs> and you're traveling in a straight line? <laughs> What would the radius of that circle be that you're on? Would it be zero or infinity? It would be infinity. So meaning you're, it's kind of abusing the idea of being a circle by saying it's an infinitely big circle, but if you just think of limits and the way that uh, calculus treats large values, I'll just draw a really big circle that will touch at one point, it's supposed to represent a huge circle. And if you just make that circle bigger and bigger, still intersecting at the same point, but make that circle bigger and bigger, eventually it gets very close to the line. So if we take the limit, it actually becomes a line. So our uh, flat line curvature is infinity. Oh, no, I'm completely saying this wrong. I defined curvature wrong. 
it's the reciprocal of the radius. Is that right? <coughs> oh man. I shouldn't have worried about English definition. I should have just given you the math definition. Yeah, I think if you have a high curvature, it's a tight turn, and a zero curvature is a straight line. All right, let's write the math definition down, and then see what we can reconstruct from that. So one thing you'll notice, dt over ds, what variable are you expecting to be in the bottom? This is a speed derivative. What were you expecting to be down there? T. So that's really weird. That's not what we were expecting in the bottom. dt over ds. So we can use some chain rule and unwind this a little bit. Ooh, I better turn off. I'm gonna turn my letters into shapes. <laughs> T over. So if I write a dt over dt, I have to then multiply by dt over ds in order for these to be equal. All right, so that's the chain rule right there. So we could compute dt dt. It's a little weird when you say it, but d capital T, d little t. And we can compute dt ds. Uh, separately, there's a few other ways. I'll write all the different versions out, and then we'll write the most useful one at the ends. So you can split. Split this up, yep. The small t is i, the small s is d. What is the big t? Tangent, where we just define the, like the last thing in the previous section, the unit tangent vector. So I'll write that up. So big T is R prime T divided by magnitude R prime T, or of course you can write it as V V T over magnitude V T. So two ways, two ways to write T. So it's our unit tangent vector. So we can rewrite this as dt over dt. Uh, uh, magnitude divided by uh, the reciprocal, which is ds over dt. Oh, wrong t. This over dt. What is uh, ds over dt? Uh, another way to write that is the, I have it as a magnitude of v. Times d capital T over d little t. So this is the useful one right here. So put a circle around that. So we're gonna use that most frequently. It will be a function of t. So k 
K, here K, I'm going to keep saying the word K, but K is really Kappa. Is that a C-A-P-P-A? K-A-P-P-A? So it's really a Greek letter for their, uh, it's basically their K. <coughs> Uh, the curvature of the uh, path that you're on at that moment. So generally curves are going to not have constant curvature, meaning depending on where you are along the path, there's actually a point, the inflection point, you actually have zero curvature. So it's basically how much turning to the left or right you're doing at that point. Yep. Yeah, I could have a little period where I'm actually going straight, and right on that part I just drew, my curvature could be zero. Then all of a sudden I start making a turn right here. So uh, a good way to think about these is uh, concavity. So here, well, this one I was trying to draw it flat right there. Let's do a little better job of drawing it flat. So that's supposed to be a flat area right there. So there'll be no curvature there. And then as I travel here, there's a tiny bit of curvature this direction as we start to curve there. And then there's a little more curvature as we get a bigger bend. And then it settles down again. Do you see that? <coughs> so the next part, there's only a tiny bit of curvature. So these arrows would be super tiny right here. There's only a tiny little bit of curvature. Meaning, if you're driving, you could drive really fast around that turn. Uh, now the curvature is going to flip. So if you're driving this direction, you're about to go from making a slight left to making a slight right turn, right at that point. So now we're going to start with only a tiny bit of turning to the right, and then we're going to turn. Uh, the turning, the curvature becomes a little higher, right here, and then it's going to shrink back down, and looks like it goes almost to zero. Does that make sense? So this is the way to think about curvature. It's basically how much curving, how much turning you're doing at that moment. It's generally not constant unless you're going around an actual circle. So the those arrows are the acceleration? Yes. And if you're thinking in the physics world, that's basically your acceleration at that moment. Not your velocity, it's your acceleration. You're always accelerating towards the center of a turn. Yeah, centripetal acceleration. All acceleration is the difference in your old velocity and new velocity. It's how your velocity is changing. So, unless you're going the exact same velocity, you're going to have acceleration. So, and you can, what color's velocity is it yellow? Uh oh. <laughs> Blue? Going once? Acceleration is green. All right, so I'm going to use that, that light blue. So if I draw velocity now, Here's my velocity vectors. And one way to think about acceleration is basically how far is your velocity vector from your future position. So I can see if your future position is really close, that's basically your acceleration is how far, what your actual position is going to deviate from what your velocity would, would, would have taken you to. So that's another way to think about acceleration. It's kind of your deviation of your curve from your velocity. And you can see when it's basically flat, your velocity is almost exactly the same as your uh, where you're going to be in the future when your curvature is, is tiny. Okay, so that's physics in a nutshell. The reason I take the rest of it. I'm kidding. Probably other stuff too, right? Friction, everything we just gloss over. <laughs> Those aren't important. <laughs> So let's do uh, computation. So we're going to actually compute curvature here on this example. So we're going to go with A cos T, A sine T, and zero. 
So curvature is right there above in the box. If you need to take a derivative, that will give you, so V is the, V of T is R prime of T. And that's one of the most important things. Once you get V of T, then you're gonna get T of T, which is magnitude, oh, V divided by magnitude of V. And once you're finished with that, you're gonna find T prime of T. Order is super important. You need to divide by your magnitude before you take your final derivative. So you've hopefully done enough derivatives by now. You know you can't just take derivative and then divide by V. That's different than dividing by V and then taking the derivative because the quotient rule. So the order is super important that you do. So as long as you go one, two, three, the way I have it written out, you should be okay. So compute them the order I have them written out. And then your last step will be writing that product, which is capital. So compute V and uh, magnitude of V first. And I'm pretty sure your magnitude should simplify with some trig really nicely. So we pick. It's not coincidence we use sine and cosine a lot. It's not squared plus cos squared. This one. Let's assume A is positive, so I don't need the absolute value on my A. Maybe it's too many absolute values. Questions on anything down to T prime. V is the uh, velocity or the derivative of the original function. And then I went over here and did the uh, the magnitude, which is basically each component. Oh, v is velocity. I, I, 
I didn't write the plus zero squared because I didn't even think about it, but there is a plus zero squared. Alright, so we're not quite done yet. The last step is writing the actual kappa out, so it's 1 over magnitude v times t prime. So we have everything we need. 1 over magnitude v is 1 over a times what we just got. Actually, I think that previous version is more enlightening than distributing the 1 over a through. Oh, what did I do wrong? Kappa should be a number. Yep, I should have taken the magnitude of t prime. There we go. What's the magnitude of that vector? One. So you should be able to tell looking at certain vectors, their magnitude is one. So if there was an A in front of the sine of the coast, it would be a, a A would be my magnitude. But this magnitude would be one. All right, so our kappa is one over A. That did not depend on T. So we have constant curvature. Uh, because that's I just because I'm skipping a lot of steps and that's a step I felt like writing down. Oh, okay. so it's the one, it's the magnitude of this vector right here, okay. which is one. one. Okay. Yes, okay. I wrote it as the square root of its magnitude. Yeah. I mean, whatever. Write it as one. It doesn't matter. I know. I, I it's the magnitude of that vector. Alright, so we had a constant curvature of 1 over a. Let's go back to the curve and sketch <coughs> it out. I picked a super simple curve. What type of a path is our particle making? Circle. What's the radius of the circle? Radius is a. Uh, it's looping around the origin on which plane? It's on the basically on the ground on the xy plane where our height is zero. So we're basically looping around the origin on the ground at whatever a, whatever radius a is. So if I drew it out, and I can try to draw in three dimensions, we're drawing something relatively easy. So our particle is going to trace out the, not necessarily unit circle, but I don't know what a is off the top of my head. It is a circle, very good. <laughs> So we'll just say whatever these are, we're just going a, a, negative a, negative a. So it's probably better to draw an overhead view. So we had the, we had z at the top. I think I already messed that up, didn't I? Did z go up? Oh, good. All right. That's why. All right, so that's the uh, circle path it's tracing out. It's probably better to do a uh, overhead view. Whenever I draw an overhead view, I always want to do this. Because if you think about moving the camera over, X would really be pointing down, unless you also did a pretty significant rotation of the camera. But that generally doesn't make people happy. It, it, it'll look the same. I mean, it's going to look exactly the same. But this is the standard way we draw XY plane. So let's think about our curvature is constant. That makes sense because we're going around a circle. So the radius of our circle is not changing. And according to our calculations, curvature is not the radius of the circle. It's the reciprocal of the radius is what I was worried about. So curvature is the reciprocal of the radius of the circle you're uh, currently making. So let's go fix our notes so it actually is correct somewhere up here. 
I lied. Curvature, the reciprocal of. Reciprocal of radius of this turn that a particle is making. So k is 1 over r right here. Maybe sure r is 1 over k, but it's the same thing. Uh, what would be the, with this information, what would be the curvature of a flat line now? So curvature would be 0. So that makes a little more intuitive sense. So we're not having any curvature, meaning we're going straight. Zero, which we're smart enough to write, that's also known as one over infinity. Being lazy, not writing limb, etc., and all that. We can write one over infinity now. Okay, so that's curvature in a nutshell. It's <coughs> a good place to stop. We'll do a little more curvature stuff before we're done with the section.